Today, we will cover uh, uh, insect pests that cause economic damage in blueberries. We will uh, cover some of the select pests in detail, and I will list other pests in presentation. However, if you have any questions regarding pests that I do not cover, feel free to type in the chat or, or just speak up at the end of the presentation, and I'll be glad to, to answer your questions. So uh, we'll, we'll start with the uh, blueberry bud mites. Oh, in fact, sorry, there was some issue with the slide movement. So here is a table that shows a list of insect pests that uh, may cause economic damage in blueberries in, uh, in the southeastern United States. And those pests uh, are, this table is organized based on the blueberry growth stages during the year. As you see those growth stages starting from pre-bloom, bloom, bloom mid-season, pre-harvest, harvest, and post-harvest. And list of those insect pests on the uh, leftmost uh, column on your slide. If you look at those gray boxes right uh, across uh, in, the, in rows from the list uh, from the pests, those gray columns show the time of activity or period when those particular pests are active. And uh, it starts with uh, blueberry bud mites, scales, borers, then it gets into galmage, uh, thrips during bloom, sort of starting from pre-bloom to bloom, even into mid-season, then aphids, leaf hoppers, um, uh, cranberry fruit worm or cherry fruit worm. And th at this point, there may be some other leaf roller type lapidopteran pests as well, because that's the time in most of the uh, green growth occurs, lots of foliage, uh, lush green foliage available on the plants. Then we get into uh, that mid-season uh, plum curculio as the fruit starts to develop. As soon as we get into pre-harvest and uh, harvest is getting closer to harvest, we get into those uh, fruit flies. The blueberry maggot is the um, old most known and then spotted wing bec becomes the key pest that has become a serious issue most recently. Then we get into white grubs, ground poles, and some other pests that may occasionally occur in some situations. Let's start with the blueberry bud mites. They're really tiny mites. They're not even true mites because true mites do have four pairs of legs. Whereas these uh, Eryophyte uh, family of mites, they have only two pairs of legs, as you can see, right, they're banana shaped in, in, in their body is banana shaped. As you see, those legs are right at the front of the body. As you see in this middle picture, that uh, body is transparent to whitish in color, about one over 128th of an inch, really about 200 microns in, in, in length. Females lay approximately 200 eggs. They develop through four stages to complete life cycle in about 15 days at 19 degrees centigrade. They can disperse by this movement locally, but they can disperse by air to longer distances by just, uh, once they get airborne, they can go long ways. They can also uh, disperse by, uh, but disperse with other insect pests uh, uh, as well by hitchhiking. Populations peak in December through February timeframe, where it depends on where you are located, and uh, uh, then decline in summer due to high temperatures. Mild winters uh, tend to boost uh, populations, leading to severe bud damage in the spring. So this is these are the critters. A picture on your left. Uh, shows a, a, an inside of a bud under uh, the camera where you see this a large number of bud mites feeding on, on, on the buds. And picture on the right side of your screen shows the structure of the plant tissue that you, that, that you will observe after a lot of feeding has happened. Because when they feed, they actually, uh, obviously they excrete to, their waste as well. within that waste, there is a toxic material that causes plant tissue to have this swollen type texture after 
uh, they have uh, released a lot of that excreta in in the buds and this uh, bud mites while they don't seem to be serious issue in most situations in some situations they can cause extremely high levels of damage uh, the last year and year before we observed uh, one blueberry orchard here in Georgia where we had 100% crop loss because of bud mites. Growers they could not even harvest. So these uh, minor things, if they are not addressed in a timely fashion, they can cause serious damage. When it comes to management, uh, Post-harvest pruning and removing of co, uh, old, old canes will reduce bud mite population. That's uh, one of the best uh, um, strategies to manage it without applying insecticides or miticides. If uh, that strategy doesn't work, our populations build up really high. Uh, there are uh, some miticide options that we have now in blueberries. Until maybe last two or three years, we did not have no miticides that were um, registered for uh, blueberries, but now we do have. So portal is the one that we, in our trials, was one of the best ones that uh, we, that you can use if we, you see high numbers of uh, bud mites. Other options are Oberon, Acromite, and, and also Insecticide, Brigade, Danit, Old7, Evamectin, Armovento uh, may work as well. Historically, uh, for mite, uh, control or horticultural or spirit oils have been used. Using high volumes of water is recommended no matter what chemical you use because these are protected uh, inside the buds. And using extremely high volumes and high pressures are required to get good coverage to make sure that uh, the insecticide residues are dispersed or uh, delivered to where, where they are located, or as soon as they get out of the buds, they will get exposed to the residues to pick up. And interior spaces at bird scales must be vetted, as mentioned, using surfactant to improve spreading and penetration of the spray also helps achieve the, the desired coverage uh, to the tissues that we are targeting in this uh, time frame. And the spray timing and coverage becomes key issue for managing bud mites. As I mentioned, bud mites, they feed inside the buds. They are rarely exposed. They are exposed only when they are moving from one bud to another bud. That is called flagrant stage. That's the only time when they are exposed. And if uh, there's a, a really good sampling program in place in the field, if you keep uh, doing frequent sampling to actually identify that stage when they are moving from one bud to another, that would be another uh, good strategy to make time spray applications to get direct exposure and good uh, efficacy. Spider mites is, is another issue that we have seen come up in some blueberry orchard, as you see in these pictures, these spider mites uh, feed primarily on the lower surface of the leaves, then they can build up really high populations, especially during uh, dry weather conditions. And uh, once you have high population and uh, established in the orchards, they suck the sap out of uh, uh, plant tissues or leaves, leading to this yellowing or bronzing of the, of the leaves. The symptoms when populations are high they're very distinct. Even aerial uh, mapping has shown distinct uh, differences between the areas within an orchard that are highly um, infested with mites as compared to uninfested areas. So they're, they can go unnoticed at lower numbers, but when populations are high, you can easily identify those. Leaf bronzing, as I mentioned, is the characteristic symptom of mite injury. Uh, and that's what you should be looking for when, when sampling for, for mite. And they can build up high populations in a relatively short period of time and cause economic damage. What they do is when you have those uh, really high populations built up, they uh, sap, suck the sap out of plants. Uh, basically, they deprive plants of the, of the material they need to photosynthesize uh, 
their food. So that causes a lot of impact on the following year of your product, uh, crop. As uh, we did some trials here in Georgia to see what options we can use. We did uh, uh, try uh, test a number of miticides. Portal was the best one on, on eggs as well as on, on the mortal stages of, uh, of these mites. But the other miticides also are effective when we need to make more than one applications. Scales is another issue that has been around blueberries for decades. However, recently scale infestations have significantly increased. And one reason that we suspect this may have happened because of the spotted wing drosophila. I will discuss in detail about it at the um, at a later point in presentation, but we because SWD is a key pest with zero tolerance in the market, lots of broad spectrum insecticides are applied to control it, which leads to killing all beneficial insects in the system. That leads to those secondary pests like scales that, that uh, has, you know, the, the secondary pests become a serious issue than they have normally been. And in, in, here in Georgia, we have seen reports that almost every orchard um, has some level of scale infestation. Some are really bad, as you can see in these pictures. If we don't uh, control them at the right time, uh, this can become really out of hand. And once you have scale infestations, like you are seeing here in these pictures, uh, it will take some time to get a, a control of those because what you're seeing is several layers of scales. Basically, females have these all these ovisacs, these white sacs that you're seeing. These are basically ovisacs that females have and which are full of eggs. And as soon as they hatch, uh, each ovisac has, I don't know, 200 to 600 eggs in it. So there will be lots of uh, scales that as soon as they start, the crawlers come out, they can you know, spread and they can also get wind borne and land on new uh, bushes within the same or, or field, or they can get windborne and spread in infestation to orchards nearby, or they can go long ways that way once they're windborne. That can cause uh, serious issues and becomes um, real problematic uh, if those new populations start to grow. Uh, their uh, control, scale control is. Uh, Historically, has been done using oil applications, you know, one to two applications of 2% oils made during the fall. Uh, however, we have uh, done, done some studies to see what uh, products may be effective at what time, because now we have a number of other options too. As far as a scale uh, uh, species, we have a complex of scale species, several species, cottony cushion scale, azalea bark scale, maple leaf scale, and potentially other species as well. And also more recently, close cousins of scales, mealybugs have started to show up in our uh, blueberries. Uh, more, I also got reports actually uh, last week from Florida that they have some mealybugs uh, showing up in blueberries too. They started from citrus and now they're moving into blueberries. So as far as management, we have a number of options that we can use to uh, control, control uh, scales. Historically, applications of uh, oils, the dam oil or GMS or, or some other oils uh, during the fall in November, they have they worked really well. Uh, however, when we compare those applications of uh, products in November, versus uh, right after harvest in August, August applications work better as compared to the fall applications in November. And the reason is that at that time uh, in, in August, plant sap is more active and any of the systemic products are, they are moving up and down really uh, well. And also scales are feeding more at that time as compared to November when it's uh, colder and scales are slower in feeding. So it takes a while for them to take up the residues of insecticides, whereas in, in August they're feeding, they can pick up residues quickly. And uh, we, we get, as a result, we get better control in a relatively short period of time. 
However, there are some restrictions on uh, or things that we need to keep in mind while making oil applications. Uh, you know, do not make oil applications during high temperatures or even low temperatures. Temperatures below 50 are not good for oil efficacy. Uh, do not use uh, oils within 14 days of lime sulfur, captan, chlorothalonil, and dimethoate, because there is some um, compatibility issues, which results in uh, some phytotoxicity if you, you don't wait uh, 14 days or, uh, after making these uh, fungicide applications. Dormant oil applications ex exacerbate exobacidium. There are some correlation found. So just keep that in mind if exobacidium is an issue. Current recommendations are to make oil applications as early in the dormant period as possible to allow uh, you know, as long as possible between oil and sulfur applications. So that's kind of a bottom line strategy to avoid any of the side effects. Flat-headed borers are another group of pests, occasional pests of blueberries that have been reported. These are a beautifully marked metallic colored beetles about half an inch long. They have short antennae and large conspicuous eyes. So they're relatively easy to identify if you have a dull moving around. Damage occurs when larvae bore into the canes. They create galleries, as you see in some of these uh, pictures. The entry hole is relatively small, but larvae feed inside the canes and basically completely girdle them. Adults are attracted to stressed or damaged blueberry canes, particularly in areas with pruning scars or sunburn. So they somehow sense that those uh, stressed uh, plant our plant tissues where they can find opportunities to infest. So the one thing you can do is keep your blueberries uh, healthy and vigorous, preventing uh, bushes from mechanical damage, wounds, sunscald, or drought stress can significantly reduce this kind of uh, damage from flat-headed borers. Once infestation is detected, the flat-headed borers can be managed uh, by pruning bushes uh, to make sure that uh, uh, old canes uh, that exhibit, exhibit borer damage are removed, prone uh, at a time of the year and in a manner that prevents bushes from sunburn to reduce any further susceptibility or vulnerability of those plants. And after pruning, chip or remove prunings from the field. If high levels of infestations are observed, then insecticide applications may be warranted. In most, in most situations, we haven't seen uh, high levels of infestation, but if that becomes the case, then an application of admire with irrigation through soil will be helpful in controlling these flat-headed borers. Blueberry gall midge is another issue that has uh, made it to one of the top three pests in blueberries. Uh, these are tiny flies, uh, females lay eggs in flowers and vegetative buds as bird scales are separate instead of late stage two birds are the most vulnerable. Uh, up to 80% of flower uh, bird loss has been observed in uh, some situations. Midge injury is easily underestimated because it happens at the time and we are also struggling with the cold damage and uh, any of the symptoms uh, do uh, get confused with the, with the cold injury as well. Monitoring for gall midge is relatively easy. You just collect uh, uh, birds uh, from the field, select field two to three times per week, place them in Ziploc bags. And uh, in a short period of time, basically in a matter of an hour or two, well, those tiny larvae will crawl out of the birds and you will be able to see those uh, larvae and get an idea of uh, the uh, how infestation levels you have. There are other ways to uh, monitor as well. You putting those uh, clear sticky cards out in the field will monitor for adults and also using inverted uh, buckets in the in fields that have a history of infestation can uh, you be used to monitor as those uh, adults, uh, overwintering adults emerge out of the ground to uh, oviposit it in in bed to start the next the next year's uh, this year's cycle. So, 
as you have detected infestation, diazinon is one of the most effective products we have, early application of uh, diazinon during stage two would be the best way to go. As uh, I mentioned, these birds feed in, uh, sorry, these gall midges will feed inside the birds. Females lay eggs on stage two to three birds and larvae feed inside the birds. They are very protected. Once the eggs have been laid and larvae have started to feed, spray applications may not be very helpful. So spray applications should be made set up on a proactive basis to, uh, and they serve as a protectant rather than killing after the effect because exposure of the target pest is less likely once they are inside the birds. If you have sphere infestation and have already used diazinon, then other options may include delegate, Sivanto, Movento. Movento label has some restrictions, so you might, might want to um, look at the label and also check with local extension to see what the situation is, because there's uh, some restriction on, in label language that may prevent use of uh, Movento during this golden age period. In organic situations, and trust is the only option that will, as a effective insecticides that can be used. So again, make sure to use make spray applications as a, a stage two to prevent further infestation, and sp our sprays serve as a protectant rather than uh, controlling the bugs after infestation. Spray timing again is key because if we miss the spray stage two to three as, as uh, birds, females may have already laid eggs and infestation may have progressed already. And, and next, as we get into the uh, bloom stage, thrips become a serious problem. And flower thrips over the past couple of years, again, have become one of the most serious issues we have seen for uh, the same reasons, you know, lots of broad spectrums are being used. And uh, and beneficials are not as abundant in the fields as they used to be, say, before SWD times. In the flower thrips, we have several species of thrips that feed on leaf and flower surfaces that are active before, during, and after bloom, may move from you know, other flowers nearby into blueberry fields. They feed on internal parts of flowers, reducing pollination and fruit set up to 60% damage has been recorded because uh, symptoms include you know, tight curling and malformation of, of the leaves. Monitoring for thrips is also relatively easy because they are not good, they, they don't fly, they just uh, move around within the uh, blooms. So sampling two to three times per week, beginning stage three of uh, birds, uh, and uh, placing some bloom clusters in sealed plastic uh, Ziploc bags. As soon as you put them in a very short period of time, those trips, they come out of the bag, uh, of the buds and you can see, sort of get an idea of what the population levels are. Uh, the th thresholds have been somewhat developed. Again, these are not hard and fast numbers. These are sort of estimated thresholds and they vary depending on the situation and management uh, uh, strategies being used at a particular farm. Overall, if you have more than two uh, trips per cluster of eight flowers, it means your population may need to be treated. Otherwise, this will get out of control pretty quickly. Adazinon is a good way to control trips if it has not been used for gall midge before during that one season, because we get only one Adazinon application per year. If it has already been used, then your other options will include a delegate, a sale, or Sivanto. For organic situations and trust is the way to go. Uh, however, uh, Thrips, they are during bloom and they are the most difficult pests to control because during bloom, we need lots of uh, pollination, uh, uh, pollinator activity in the field from wild pollinators, wild bees, native bees, as well as honeybees that uh, some farmers rent uh, and others 
may also purchase those uh, bumblebees that may be active in the field to help with pollination. So that's what one thing that makes TRIPS control real complicated. However, there are ways to get around it and to still be able to control, which one thing that you can do is make spray applications really early in the morning before pollinators are active around dawn or dusk at the late in the evening to make sure direct exposure uh, to uh, pest, uh, of pollinators to pesticides does not occur. That way you can minimize any unintended uh, damage to the pollinators in the field. Now let's look uh, back at the table. As I mentioned, we will cover some of the select pests, but all of these pests are important, but spotted ring Drosophila has become the key pest. All of the management or insect pest management decisions should keep SWD control in mind and make sure that any products uh, strategies that uh, are effective to control SWD should be reserved for that time period. Let's get into the weeds of SWD. Spotted ring Drosophila is a, a, a vinegar fly of uh, Asian origin. It was it's been uh, in Asia, was initially recognized in early 1900s in, in Japan, China, South Korea, yeah, as a pest of uh, uh, cherries, uh, have been called cherry fruit fly or cherry fly. It was first detected in Hawaii in 1980 and stuck there for a while. And then in the mainland US, it was first detected in 2008. Since then, it has become a serious issue in all across the US, in all fruit growing regions in the US. Uh, spotted wing name comes from these two dark spots on the wings of male SWD. And uh, females of this fly, if overall, this, you know, SWD belongs, as I said, it's a vinegar fly. It belongs to family Drosophilidae, which has about 1,500 members in, in this family. And only two of uh, those members have ever been uh, known to become pests. And this obviously is the worst one. And the reason it becomes pest is that females are, uh, have this very unique ovipositor, which is sclerotized, which means it's a hardened and has these serrations on it, which females use to puncture otherwise intact fruit and deposit eggs inside the fruit. Larvae develop inside the fruit and cause a lot of damage. When females lay eggs, you can actually see those breathing tubes uh, from the surface. If you have some trained eyes, even without a hand lens, but with hand lens, it's very clear that it's a pair of tubes that stick uh, that sticks out of this uh, on the surface of the fruit where eggs are laid. And then once eggs are laid, larvae do, uh, um, uh, eggs hatch and larvae uh, come out within 12 to 72 hours. And from that point on, they feed inside and turn otherwise uh, normal intact fruit into unmarketable fruit in a relatively short period of time. This time frame was done in the lab in, in the field uh, where we have uh, lots of other factors and even higher temperatures going on this process will happen even faster. The whole process from uh, our, our whole development from uh, egg to adult uh, of this fly, this happens really fast. Whole process can be completed in eight to 10 days at 25 degrees. Uh, and the, what this means is that this fly can go through several generations during a field season, can build up populations even from a starting lower numbers to really high numbers and can cause uh, serious damage in, in, the, in, in the fields if management strategies are not applied. What we have seen, we monitored uh, SWD populations in Georgia blueberry orchards for more than two years, up to three years now. And we have seen that flies are, can be trapped year round. So they don't have no downtime. Uh, and the numbers were higher year round in those wooded areas nearby blueberry orchards that we have here. And most of the blueberries in the Southeast do have some, uh, uh, some forested areas or some non-crop areas nearby where there are some other potential hosts that may be present. 
So the bottom line is that flies are active and we have we do not have developed any threshold numbers that may translate into okay we, until we have this many flies in the traps we can we don't need to make applications no once you have one fly in the trap you have to make spray applications immediately otherwise situation can get out of control very quickly in the past we have uh, or several years we have used these uh, liquid traps which were basically yeast sugar water slurry about 150 ml in this 32 ounce plastic cup or some people have used those uh, uh, peanut butter jars as well with the holes around the, the sides to you get an idea of you know what fly if you have any SWDs at the farm but numbers do not correlate to the population levels or damage so any one fly once detected means you have to implement control strategies we did some studies to uh, develop more convenient monitoring method where we tried these red sticky cars uh, baited with this uh, commercially available lore and we found comparable results so now starting from last year we have uh, recommended the the use of these red sticky cars baited with these commercially available lores to monitor SWD. And once you have SWD detected in those red sticky cars that can be used up to six weeks, uh, you know, one lore is good for six weeks. We can look at the cars weekly and sort of get an idea starting about two weeks before fruit starts to change color. As, as uh, mentioned, uh, these flies are after the ripe or ripening fruit. That's when the susceptibility window starts. You might want to put these uh, traps two weeks prior to the time when you would expect their first fruit to turn color. And if you see, if you detect SWD, especially males using those two dark spots on the wings, is really easy to uh, de detect in those red sticky cars. If you have trained eyes, you can even detect males by pressing on the abdomen, and their unique ovipositor can be distinct from other flies that may be present in the field. But males are real easy. Once you have a, a males in the traps, you need to implement management recommendation management programs. In the wooded areas nearby, we did some studies to see, to evaluate or assess populations in non-crop areas, um, you know, different kinds and pines with the understory of uh, all kinds of uh, wild uh, fruiting plants was the the habitat where most flies were present. This is how it looks. Now, it's pines on the um, primarily um, with the lots of things in understory. These are potential uh, hosts that SWD flies can lay eggs, and also in some of them can complete their development. And uh, one of my grad students did his uh, research uh, thesis work. We found several species where. SWD were able to lay eggs and complete development. So if there's anything you can do, even you know, burning within uh, those areas to minimize number of uh, fruiting plants nearby that can help at least uh, uh, in the short term to lower SWD pressure if you have high pressures. Management, there are several strategies by control, chemical control, behavioral and cultural. I'll just show you a little bit about each of those. And then we'll take questions. A group of us, uh, a multi-regional grant uh, that we we are working on, on uh, or we have been working on this uh, project as a multi-regional group for more than seven, eight years now. And finally, last year, we were able to get uh, permits from uh, USDA APHIS to release this uh, exotic parasitoid Gnespis, the one on the top, Gnespis brasiliensis. This was one that passed all the tests and was, has shown some efficacy. We are building populations currently and will have some get some some of those released uh, at the at some point later this year, and then we'll monitor to see how they establish and what kind of impact we observe. But local biological control based on native parasites has been negligible. Chemical control. Luckily for conventional systems, we have lots of insecticides that pass this threshold of being good, as you can see in this uh, figure here. So it's really easy to control in uh, conventional systems. 
but in organic systems that's where we we are in serious trouble because and trust is the only organic product that barely touches the you know, threshold of being good the rest of them are not even close so we we need to be really uh, uh, thinking about organic including other strategies than just relying on organic spray applications to manage swd in high pressure situations in organic orchards here is a sort of an efficacy picture, as I mentioned earlier, only in trust gets even closer. The rest are not, not as good. So what can we do to improve efficacy and get the most out of our organic uh, products? One thing we can do is that we can make spray applications during dawn and dusk time, because based on studies, uh, one of my grad students did on behavior of this fly, and the, the fly numbers were higher during dawn and dusk in the field, especially in southeastern US, days get really hot. So flies were using those opportune times of dawn and dusk when temperature was lower, humidity was still reasonable for them to be out there. So making spray applications during those times can get a direct exposure of the flies to insecticide and overall efficacy can be much better as compared to making spray applications during the daytime. These are some you know, suggested programs we develop depending on your target market and strategy that you wanna um, use at, at the orchard, reduce risk-based strategy, delegate XRL, some new, actually some other reduced risk products are also available if you look at the graph that I showed, organic and trust and Evo, organic and a number of other products also that need to be rotated with N-Trust. Otherwise, N-Trust resistance has, uh, is a serious issue, although we haven't seen in the Southeast. In California, high levels of N-Trust resistance, of widespread resistance has been already reported. Now, in, in uh, con conventional settings, how do we have lots of options? What would be the best way to go? Here is a, a graphs that uh, show you know, if you have to make a decision on <clears throat> excuse me, what product to start with, then use the heaviest hammer possible as the first thing that will knock the population down to the lowest numbers. And then you can go with the medium to low efficacy uh, products to make sure that you do a practice resistance management. That way, not, no repeated applications are being made of one particular uh, mode of action. Behavioral control is also in the making. A number of us as a multi-regional grant uh, group, we are working on developing uh, attract and kill strategies based on uh, an attractant that attracts the flies. And we have a toxicant mixed with it, so they get killed as they, they approach the uh, attractant. One of the products that we are, have most recently been working on is a combi protect. It was developed in Europe where we did observe in initial studies that even half of the uh, uh, rates uh, of interest or uh, we did similar, we did find similar results with the, uh, with the uh, uh, delegate as well we're in conventional settings that half the rate application mixed with Combi Protect did provide, uh, did, did produce similar results. So the, this, this is one approach that we are working, is still not finalized yet, but as soon as we have final results from large scale field trials that us uh, will be going on this year, we will make those recommendations. Cultural control, as I mentioned, are necessary in organic systems and recommended in all systems, because they do help minimize uh, use of broad spectrum insecticides to relieve some pressure from beneficials out there. Again, the goal here is the, to manipulate your modify the environment to minim, make it less hospitable for flies in the field. Physical exclusion is you know, a very simple way. It's one of the most foolproof strategies to control SWD in uh, blueberries with 100% protection. Where you use those uh, uh, you know, tunnels to keep flies out of the system. In other uh, berry crops, it also helps significantly. So it's one of the best strategies 
while it seems expensive uh, upfront, results have been very promising for the long-term management of SWD and other pests. And also in some studies, uh, fruit quality was also improved when grown inside the tunnels. So it doesn't have multiple benefits if implemented. Irrigation, if there are options, you go with the drip irrigation as compared to overhead irrigation because uh, overhead irrigation increases humidity, which um, uh, also flies like. So high humidity means high, uh, uh, more flies are environment that is hospitable to keep flies in the field for longer times. Mulching, there are several types of mulches that uh, can be used to uh, put on the grounds under uh, berries. The principle here is, <clears throat> excuse me, that uh, fly, when these uh, larvae are fully fed, they come out of the berries and drop to the ground, either intentionally or unintentionally, to pupate in the soil. If we have a barrier on the soil, they will get toasted because of high temperature and will not be able to complete their uh, development that way. There are a number of uh, uh, mulches, you know, the black weed mat was the best one that we studied some regions, for example, in Pacific Northwest, they are using those reflective mulches. They also help with the uh, fruit quality as well in cherries and also potentially with uh, berries because they do reflect light and even distribution of light on all the berries does help with the fruit quality as well. Pruning is again another way principle here is that heavy pruning will expose, will open up the canopy for more light to penetrate into the fruiting zone where flies may be present. And uh, it also slightly increases temperature and decreases humidity, which does create environment less hospitable for flies. And it did help in some situations, uh, especially with uh, blueberries, other berries it did not because their, their growth was so fast that pruning did not make much difference during the peak season. Harvest frequency, more frequently you harvest the better because leaving more ripe fruit in the field for longer period um, means that uh, there is an attraction in the field for flies to come in and to build populations. Uh, so frequent harvesting does help minimize that attraction in the field and keeps uh, the uh, uh, flies out of the field. And uh, removing, you know, every two days or harvesting every two days was uh, found to be the best in raspberries in, in, in Michigan. And the same thing in blueberries as well, if you can, that's the every other day or every third day would be the best way to harvest. Or as frequent as possible. And same principle applies to sanitation. If we have lots of rotten fruit, overripe fruit on the ground, that means we have attractment in the field for flies to uh, come in over positive, build populations and infest fruit. So removing and destroying any cold fruit as frequently as possible. Uh, once you do that, make sure or leave in a sealed container or um, uh, two, for two to three days in direct sun that will kill everything in there. Or uh, alternatively, you can bury at least uh, two feet deep into the ground to make sure that those uh, pupae or flies when adults emerge, they will not come out of the ground. Once you have harvested, if you suspect infestation, you can still keep the fruit in cold storage to maximize uh, the to minimize their uh, development. In, in number one, it will kill majority of the uh, larvae, if it, they are not killed, the development will be slowed enough that that will, that will give you enough of time to market the fruit. To summarize, SWD is a, a key pest and uh, flies in, in our region can be trapped year round. So using the most convenient way of red panel traps to monitor it would be the best way if you detect even single uh, male SWD on red panel traps. That means you have to implement management strategies, wooded areas where there are lots of alternative hosts in the understory that may be another place where flies stick around when we don't have blueberries in the field. For conventional management, we have a number of insecticide options, but 
due to uh, risk with resistance uh, development, make sure to rotate insecticides between uh, with different modes of actions. And we do have lots of options to do that. Use more reduced risk insecticides to minimize uh, exposure and harm to non-target uh, beneficials out there. Majority of SWD activity occurs during dawn and dusk. So making insecticide applications during dawn and dusk time will be the best way to improve efficacy of otherwise not too effective products. Organic management still remains a challenge that will require a combination of cultural, behavioral, and other strategies to get a good control in high pressure situations. Other pests like butt mites, spider mites, scales, dolmage, thrips, they are the most important ones in blueberry systems as secondary pests. Frequent sampling is necessary to determine infestation levels and number of insecticides, uh, including oils and other options are available to control those insects. Uh, SWD biocontrol, as I mentioned, has been uh, approved using exotic parasitoids and will keep you posted on how well they do and uh, then make it available to stakeholders in multiple states. More research is going on and we'll keep you posted through presentations and webinars like this. There are some resources that uh, Rebecca also mentioned. Uh, we have a Southeast uh, Regional Blueberry Guide. We have My IPM app. Uh, we have UGA Blueberry blog. There we post uh, uh, resources, timely resources on pest and disease management and other aspects of blueberry production. We also have this uh, organic uh, uh, SWD management uh, uh, brochure that was uh, developed out of uh, UGA. If you have interest, this has a lot of information on organic management of SWD. With that, I would like to thank you uh, for the invitation and listening. And I'll, at this point, I'll take any questions you may have.